Hello, hola, buenas tardes, mucho gusto, namaste. So I'm going to start with my name is Danishta. You can call me Dani for My name is not here, but we both are Om Sabor. And this name, Om Sabor, uh, it's, it's a fusion. So it comes from like the Hindu, the Hindu background mixed with Spanish. Sabor means flavor. And I grew up in a temple. My parents both met at a like Hindu uh, temple in Mexico and they raised me and my sister vegetarian. So I've never had meat in my life before. And when I met my partner um, in, a, in a corporate kitchen, a tech kitchen, he kind of like guided, guided me through, through some like, like the flavors of like what real things tasted like. And we kind of started experimenting and we're like, oh, you know, like try this like tofu fish or like try this seitan chicken or whatever. And he'll be like, ah, oh, that kind of tastes close. Or like, oh, that tastes like, no, don't do that. And anyway, so we both formed Om Sabor. And so we do like caterings and, um, you know, deliveries to San Francisco and the Bay Area. And so what I would like to show you today, we really, like our cooking style really goes with the flow of the moment. So we're really in touch with like energies. And what that's one of the things that OM is about. So OM is like cosmic vibrations. You know, we're calling all those like, and meditating on like those positive cosmic energies that come from the universe and meditating for those vibrations to go into our flavors, our sabor. So the vibrations I was feeling today because it was kind of warm and hot today was uh, a ceviche. I honestly did not want to know what I was going to cook until just like the last three hours ago. So thank you. Thank you for um, patiently being here. So one of the things that I got marinating was uh, trumpet, king oyster trumpet mushrooms, which are like one of our favorites to use for the ceviche and seafood and beach mushrooms. You can see these are these like cute little guys right here. And so I got them marinating right here with a little bit of mango and cilantro and they have their lime juice in them. But the thing with cilantro, I mean with ceviche is that you want to keep uh, keep it cooking with a lot of lime juice. So I'm gonna add in a little bit of extra more lime. So as you can see. It's okay if you have it like swimming in here. And so when we first started the catering company, we actually started doing these uh, course dinners. So we would do like six, seven, sometimes we have like eight, nine course meals. Crazy. And we would do like one of the ones we would have were like ceviche seven ways. So ceviche is like a huge favorite dish of Luis, who is my partner. And you know, I think I, I, I figured out some ways to win the part. Can you hear me? I, I, I figured out some of the ways to make like some ceviche and different textures to be like experimenting and win his heart too because we were co-workers and he eventually fell in love with the food and Primo, me estás moviendo la cámara. Primo, me estás moviendo la cámara. Uh-oh, looks like we dropped the, hi, Mike. <laughs> looks like we dropped the uh, the camera there. Can you, can you see us back again? Oh, there we go. I can see you again. Uh, hold on. So uh, there's a little ball, I think, in the, in the a ver, yeah, no lo toques. Hold on. There we go. <laughs> Okay. Mike, Mike no, turn no, no. off your camera, my friend. Me? No, I'm telling Mike to turn off his camera. Okay, there so what, am I okay? Yeah, everything's good now. <clears throat> everything's perfect. Okay. 
So let's see. So I was here with the life. Déjala Misha, te estoy diciendo, déjala en paz. Y está bien. Okay, so we have like some limes right here and we have like some mango and cilantro. So there's so many different ways of making ceviche. And for example, my personal favorite one is where you, and I actually have the cilantro, uh, the, fucking, the celery right here. But <clears throat> I'm not going to use it today because the, the type of ceviche I'm making today is more a la mexicana, which is basically you're like tomatoes and uh, onions and cilantro and then you also have like uh, cucumbers and mango so that's more of the a la mexicana me and luis both have like different cooking styles of how we do like our ceviche so, so this is the this is what we have right here and now what i'm gonna do is you dice like a couple tomatoes and that's uh, just like one of the most easiest things to make <clears throat> and it's like super healthy yeah you, can, and you just kind of like mix it all in together my favorite like if you leave a ceviche like a day is like the best because kind of like the flavors kind of have all kind of come together and hey jeff please turn off your camera let's see right here can you see okay so you can you can just leave it like this also or if you want to get like a little extra fancy and do like a kind of like an agua chile type of style. You throw in your cucumber, although agua chile is usually like the cucumber and like the shrimp. But adding the cucumber and the ceviche is kind of like a nice, like a nice touch. So look, these guys. <clears throat> I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna just kind of touch base on these uh, king oyster trumpet mushrooms. If you marinate these with um, some like seaweed or uh, or like soak them in water the day before. They just absorb a lot of like moisture and they're very like nice and plump to use towards the next day. Um, so sometimes we make like a dashi um, with the king oyster trumpet mushrooms so we, it can give it like an extra flavor for the, for, for the ceviches or anything else we like to use. Okay, and then this is another secret <clears throat> of the ceviche. So <clears throat> I'm gonna say like a little story. Um, going back to when I was in, uh, let's see how much time we got. Going back when I was in uh, uh, in Michoacan. So I was born in Mexico. My parents came to um, America back in nine in the back in the nineties, and we we moved to LA and then we were in Santa Cruz and we were basically raised in like a temple. But then my grandfather died in Mexico. And then, so we had to like fly back um, and go back to Mexico. And we basically were there since I was, I basically grew up there from like 12 to 1920. And so I went to the secundaria and the prepa, the preparatoria. And anyways, so the secret ingredient that I want to give to Michoacan Ceviche is salsa valentina. <laughs> so this is the salsa that you actually put a little like a splash of it. And this is like pretty much, I'm gonna say, this is like the secret recipe to the ceviche. And so when I was in, when I was in school, um, I grew I like, we moved to a ranch, which was, um, kind of in the middle of nowhere and we went to like a very local poor uh, low income uh, resource school and so they didn't have the resources to have like kitchen help so what they would do is that they would get help from the students to help and um to help and you know like uh do like the prep work and all that and all that kind of stuff and so when I remember when I was in school, I was like, they're like, okay, you, 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 and you, you guys are coming to like the kitchen and you guys are gonna help make ceviche. And I was like having nightmares about the fish. And I remember telling my mom, I was like, oh, I am gonna have to cut fish for the ceviche. And you know, we didn't eat fish at home. And so it was kind of a little traumatic for me, but so when we went to the kitchen, it was kind of very like amazing because they were like, oh, we don't use like actually any seafood. 
products. We use textured soy. And their whole ceviche was vegan and gluten-free. So <clears throat> this salsa valentina is one of like the this is one of like the things that we used to use. And ceviche just really brings back a lot of like flavorful memories for me. You know, like a lot of like little towns in Mexico, like Mexico, if you think about it, like it is a heavy based country with a lot of like meat, like all the tacos, you know, usually have like, you know, all this kind of meat stuff. But if you grew up in a in a rancho or if you know like people that came from like really humble towns, people can't really afford to buy like meat or like cheese and dairy and these kind of like uh, it's kind of more like an extravagant ingredient because people are, are just uh, you know they, they don't have the same resources and they rely on like the plants that kind of grow around them so uh, if you go around little little towns in Mexico you will find that there's like so many uh, so many recipes that are um, vegetarian or vegan. And so I'm going to add a little bit of more cucumber to mine. And um, one of the, so this one, this, this which that I'm doing is kind of, is more of the La Mexicana. And the ones we also like to do is kind of more on like a, on a Peruvian style, which is one of my favorite types of ceviche because there's a broth. I mean, I don't know if you want to call it a broth because it's not, it's not boiled, but it's, 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 a, it's called leche de tigre. So it's like, uh, it's called literally a tiger's milk. And the main basis of it is like uh, ginger, celery, um, you put like a different kinds of like herbs. If you're doing like a verde one, you'll put like cilantro and some kind of ají verde. And it's just like a really nice refreshing and different type of ceviche. So we tend to do these different types of ceviches on our uh, meal, on our catering meal platform that we sell online. And let's see, I think I got enough cucumber here. Mix it up. And like again, like I said, if you can leave it marinating, I like to eat it like one day old. But Luis likes Luis likes to eat it fresh. So it just kind of really depends on your taste. But it should somehow kind of be looking like this. Ta-da! That looks delicious. Oh my I god. Know, I don't know what else to say. I spoke really fast. I guess I'm kind of done. I want to put some avocado in it because you can never go wrong with avocado. Christy. Yeah. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> I just I am just in awe with A, how quickly that went, and B, like how amazing that looks. Wow. <laughs> I thought this was going to take longer. I don't know. If, I just wanted, you know. I want to reach through the screen and eat it right now. <laughs> with the, with the trumpet mus mushrooms, if you use them for the ceviche, do you recommend uh, marinating them the night before? There's just like so many ways that you could do it because for example, Luis likes to put roast them in the oven. So that's kind of like his, oh, yeah. his secret recipe way or what, or, you know, his way, his style of doing it. He likes to, uh, he likes to roast them. And so one of the things that we, one of the oils that we've kind of been um, migrating to is like we'll do coconut or grapeseed oil. We're trying to like stay away from like a soybean or canola and the other oils. So, and I mean, you can do any kind of oil, but those are the, like the ones, the coconut oil is, seems to be like the one that kind of enhances the flavor the most. And um, 
but it's a it's like a preference it's a, it's a, it's a, it's it's preferential like i like to have it raw because then it's, then i don't have to think of like oh i need to like uh, do the the baking or it also kind of cuts out the oils that you're baking them in but this is basically basically it you know and you can make ceviche not, like if you don't like mushrooms you can go with like cauliflower or the like the michoacan style is with textured soy protein which is the tvp and if you ask a lot of people from like michoacan they'll be like oh yeah that's how like my mom makes it and it's kind of like a very like comfort, like a home comfort food. So I guess that's why I kind of went with it because it's also something that kind of brings me back, back to my roots. So. And ceviche is such a, an awesome summertime dish. It just screams summertime to me. I know. And, that, and today was kind of warm. And and I was I was like oh no the hot days are gonna go away it's gonna get cold again so anyways and that's just kind of was calling out <laughs> that's a it's good tip out. though if you don't like mushrooms to substitute with cauliflower oh my goodness look at how beautiful that is Can you oh, guys taste this <laughs> you're da -da -da -da. making me all jealous everybody in the chat is so jealous. Oh, and somebody even suggested doing coconut ceviche. That's a really interesting suggestion, Isaac. We have done with coconut ceviche. There's some crazy videos of Luis, like going all crazy with the coconuts. <laughs> and he's going with his mach he's going with his machete, just like take a video of me, watch me, and I'm just like praying. <laughs> and he doesn't chop a finger off. But yes, coconut ceviche is like one of our, like, our favorite. My favorite ceviches for sure. It is like very labor laborious to make as well though. So we don't really often have that on the menu, but it is definitely like one of one of the best ceviches like you can you can make with the with the the car la carne de coco. That's what like they call it. And um shoot. I guess I'm done. I didn't think I was gonna be done so quickly. Another dish. Huh? Another dish. I wish you guys were here so we could feed you. Oh my gosh, that looks amazing. And it produces so much. I mean, my goodness, that it, that just looks so delicious. Yeah, it just gave me so much. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so you can make ceviche with like a uh, like carne de coco, which is like the coconut um, mushrooms, cauliflower. Cauliflower is also very popular in Mexico too. Um, the TVP. I'm trying to think what else. Um, so like with like the Peruvian ceviche, they they use a uh, choclo corn. They add like into their protein. They add like a choclo corn and sweet potatoes which is kind of like very different from Mexican ceviche because you never see like sweet potatoes in a ceviche. But it is, it's one of my favorites. It's one of the favorite ones that we make. And we make like a, it's a, you add a cancha corn. So you fry like a, a popcorn and you throw it in with like some shaved uh, red onions and more cilantro and lime. And, oh, it's nice. Yeah, I don't know if anybody has any questions. Oh, we did have a question. We were uh, someone in the chat was wondering if we could, if you could go through the list of ingredients again in that particular ceviche. Okay, so for this one particular is gonna be. Let's see if I have another little guy around here. Oh, okay. So it's it's basically mushrooms. I know this looks kind of like a like your. Well, not really, but you got the for this one in particular, you got these two little guys. Um, you got some beach mushrooms, and then you got some king oyster trumpet mushrooms, and then we have mango, cucumber, avocado, tomato, lime, onion, and uh, mango. Did I say mango already? Oh. And uh, 
Salsa secret ingredient. Salsa <laughs> secret, secret ingredient from Michoacán, straight up. Puro Michoacán right here. This is a salsa valentina. Not tapatillo. We do not use that in Mexico. This is the real deal, guys, right here. And um, yeah, I don't know what else I can say. <laughs> this went really quick. I did not think it was going to go so quick. Um, I'm trying to think something. Uh, oh, okay. let's see. If you added tomato juice to the one that you made, would it become a Mexican cocktail? <laughs> My wife? Somebody in the chat asked, if you added tomato juice to the one, you, one you've made, would it become a Mexican cocktail? Yes. So to make like a cocktail, for example, like in, in, in the ceviche Mexican culture, it's like a very common dish, a cocktail de camarón. So you, yes, like you would have tomato juice, but um, interestingly enough, you also add like a little bit of ketchup and you can add a little bit of like a vegan Worcestershire sauce and soy sauce as well for those. Ooh. So to make like a cocktail, a cocktail, which also in like um, Peruvian ceviche is also like soy sauce and like ginger and kind of like those type of Asian ingredients because they have like that Asian uh, flair influ influence in their culture is also like in like in in the ceviches as well. It's like part of the ceviche culture. So, uh, so more yeah. like a like a shrimp cocktail kind of situation. Of course, my brain immediately went to like a cocktail cocktail. <laughs> oh, like a drink cocktail? Yeah, no. Like so, for example, like for hangovers and like. Uh, Pozole, like uh, cocktail de camarón, <laughs> like all those things are like your go-tos if you have a hangover, is like because you know it's kind of like bringing you back to life. So yeah, it's basically like a tomato juice. You put you know, put the secret sauce again, <laughs> and um, you know a little bit of soy sauce and ketchup, and you know it's basically like your pico de gallo. You have like tomatoes and jalapenos and onions and avocado of course and lime and that will bring to life and we have a we have an sfbs member in the chat mike he's wondering he, he said he's very new to om sabor and uh he was wondering if you could kind of give us an overview of your company so kind of talk about your flavors and also i know that you all are still in business uh, throughout the pandemic, people can go online and, and order meals. So, um, yeah, let's let's let folks know about that for sure. Yeah. So going like way back to like 2012, um, I was working in like a, a front end coding, and I had graduated in with like a web, with web design and um, with a bachelor's in web design and uh, interactive media. And I had started this blog um, that's called the Vegetarian Blog. I mean, it's it's still active. It's there. I just haven't put any recipes lately. But it's it's a project that I started where I kind of wanted to put like all the knowledge that I grew up in from the temple and <clears throat> all like the experiences of like the the like the like the food that I had gathered over the years from like traveling or on like in the meditation center and and share them with people. Um, because I grew up very Mexican, but at the same time I grew up Hindu. So it was kind of like a very, like people were like, well, are you like Indian or are you like Mexican? And so my mom would, my mom was a chef for like what this, uh, was one of the chefs for this temple. and. You know, sometimes when we would have like a, let's say like a Bengali sabji, but we didn't have any like chapatis or rotis, we would have, we would eat it with like tortillas, you know, or, or sopes. And so from home, this kind of whole fusion started. And I can't remember, I think it was in like 14, 13, 2013, 14. I was like, okay, I wanna, I'm gonna go out and do like a veg fest. <clears throat> And so I just kind of like looked up what I need to get to get my business started. And it kind of just started like as a hobby because I wanted to share like how good like vegetarian or like vegan food can be. 
And in that time, I was kind of like in the transition of like going towards veganism. And I attended like a few, I went to like a, a vegan, vegan beer fest in LA. Yeah, vegan beer fest in LA. And it just, you know, I was like, wow, like very like pumped by it. And so I, I kept on throughout the years, I kept on doing like different veg fests. I went to like Portland and kind of in LA and, but I was based in Santa Cruz at that time. I was living there. And on 2015 at the SF Veg Fest, I did, I did an event there where I was like, people were, I didn't really have, my, I didn't have a branding at, at that moment. People were like, oh, are you Taqueria La Venganza? And I was like, shit, I need to get my name together and all my, my whole branding together because people didn't really know who I was and they were confusing me with other chefs. And so I, cause I had a, like a taco booth. I remember like at that, at that event, at that festival. Um, and I, I remember I Googled up what kind of gigs I could get for a vegetarian or vegan, like as a vegan chef. And like, there were so many that came up and I like applied for one of them and I got a call right away as I was like setting my booth and it was like on a Friday. And I remember it was like, the guy was like, hey, do you want to come for an interview? And I was like, yes, I just kind of look like shit because I just set up like this uh, food booth and I'm in a truck and I'm like, my, I'm just not in like an interview attire. And I went to the place and I remember it was like the last day, I guess, of the Giants playing in their season. And I was like, why is there so many Giants fans around here? And it turned out that the place where I was going for the for the kitchen or yeah, for the kitchen position interview was at Dropbox and their corporate kitchen was right in front of the Giants 18th Stadium, which was uh, the China Basin uh, building. And so I was like, great, I'm never gonna find parking. And I was driving and I miraculously found a parking spot like right in front of like the building. And there was this guy, I remember like he was in his scooter waiting for his girlfriend and he helped me park like the pickup truck, which had never driven through San Francisco. And it was just like all magically meant to be. So long story short, I, changed my whole I like I changed my whole world I left everything that I had to pursue this dream of sharing how how good you can eat and how much flavor you can you in satisfaction you can get from plant-based food I grew you know I grew up with my whole life getting flavors from like uh, Brazil, China, Russia, Italy at this meditation center. And everybody had to convert their traditional recipes to vegetarianism. And so that's something that, you know, I grew up as a kid and eventually, you know, like, you know, transforming into vegan to veganism, it's not that really hard going from vegetarian to vegan. You can just kind of modify different ingredients. And it's, it's just something that I have in my heart that I wanted to share, you know, with people. And eventually, so at this job, I met Luis and um, he's my partner. And so I was kind of like, hey, you know, like try the ceviche. And I got him to come out with me to, I think it was the last uh, vegan beer fest in Portland. I can't remember, but it was like maybe 2016. And he was kind of like, whoa, you know, like I didn't know this could be so cool. And, um, and we just, you know, after then, we just kind of started uh, joining our forces together. And um, and then that's how, like, Om Sub Wars started. Yeah. Oh, so, that's that's yeah. such a good story. I love it. I Is love it. it. <laughs> yes. It's I almost inspiring. thought it was so cheesy. It's so, it's adorable and it's inspiring. I love it. It's got all the, all the hallmarks of a good story. And I definitely want to direct everybody to omstabor.com because you can find out what kind of dishes they do. You can get on board with their, uh, with their deliveries. There, there's so much going on. Even, even during the shutdown, you guys are still out there. You're still doing stuff. And I did have, um, Somebody asked, uh, could you talk about uh, your time at Greens and 
drink at blah, 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 blah. start over. <laughs> We'll edit that out in post. <laughs> Pat asked if you could talk about your time at Greens and also if you could talk about the Ombus. <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, my experience at Greens. So, yeah, after I left, uh, after I, like working at uh, Dropbox in the Tech Corporate Kitchen was amazing. You know, they basically let me do my own menus. I remember like, like on my stage, I was, which is kind of like the the first interview that you do in like a cooking in a cooking scenario. I remember I was like this. Uh, my chef, she was like, "Hey, you know, I I, I have like four bell mushrooms on the menu." I was like, "You want to do the marinade?" And I was like, "Yeah, you know, like let's do some like cilantro and basil and like ginger." And I remember she gave me the space, and she was like, "Cilantro, basil." I was like, "Yeah." They're like. They're like cousins, you know, they, they get along, they high five each other. And, um, I, you know, she did in, in, the, in this, in this place, they basically let me do, you know, my menus and, and I, I could order like all the nuts and all the ingredients that I wanted to, but there was like <clears throat> a point where I felt like I wanted to like get a little bit more hands-on on the restaurant experience. So that's when I went to Greens. I was, um, I went, I went to, I dropped a resume off. I wanted to see if they had, were hiring anybody in. And their, maybe like their, like their vegan options aren't, or weren't back then, like uh, as accessible. Uh, but I mean, I, I remember them, they always had like some kind of, you know, like some kind of like uh, vegan options, but the, there was just like amazing because they're backed up also like on this zen uh, this whole zen meditation with the with the farm that they have and so the people that have been have been working there have been there for years you know the, some of the servers have been there and cooks have been there for like 13 15 18 years so for an institution especially in the restaurant industry for somebody to be working there for such a long time tells you so much about the establishment of that area. And I just felt so like welcomed and loved, you know, from like the peers and chefs there. And it is so much work. I, I wish people sometimes could get an insight into how the restaurant industry is because having like on, I, like I was raised in, uh, in my dad's clinic, and so my dad's he's an he's a doctor, but he specialized in acupuncture. So my whole like teenage years, I was pretty much following him around in, in the clinic with uh, with uh, taking needles out, like different like simple uh, Chinese medical procedures, and from different work like jobs that I've had, being in a restaurant in the kitchen on the line is one of the hardest jobs that I've been through. Like you have to multitask. You have to be thinking about like, this plate has to come at the same time with all these other plates. It has a different cooking method. And you know, are, are all these plates ready? And on top of that, it's just not, not only one order you're focusing on, it's like five other orders. So it was, it was a really hard, it was a hard awakening experience for like not to take things that come the the service that comes from like the restaurant for granted. It's just it's a lot of it's a lot of hard work, um, and people like I thrived on the ad adrenaline. I mean, it was amazing, but you know there's also a lot of love and a lot of passion that goes into that. And so one of the things that I really wanted to kind of like touch touch on. Uh, was being grateful for the whole industry that works in not only like the restaurant, like in the kitchen, from the people that are doing like the dishes, you know, but also to like farmers, you know, we, we will eat like, for example, like the ceviche and like a bunch of other vegan food like on a daily basis or whatever we're eating. But do we ever think about like, you know, the people that cultivated like these vegetables? on like where where are all these like things coming from like who are the people that are 
you know, bringing this to us? Like, what experience did they go through? And I have a lot of, like, personal family relationship to that because when we were living here, like, my father would go to Watsonville and he would, um, he would go out to the farms and give his treatment for free for, for a lot of, like, the farmers because it was kind of, he, he was always very passionate about, like, agriculture. And um, I remember, like, doctors would come from different countries. Um, and in a specific case, I remember, like, a doctor coming from, like, Venezuela. And he didn't speak English. He had to leave his country. And he was out picking, you know, vegetables and fruits, you know, in the fields. And I really want to acknowledge all the people that, work very hard to pick all the fruits and vegetables to give us you know this food so anyways i guess that's it <laughs> that's so important that's so important we're actually going to be talking to uh lauren from food empowerment project soon and and uh, i know that that's one of food empowerment project's main focuses is um making sure people are aware of who who is picking your food? Who's who's who are the ones out there doing that hard labor and how poorly they are treated in these circumstances? And it's and we really do need to make sure that we're doing everything we can to support the workers, the farm workers, because it is such a hard job. And yeah. and it's it's backbreaking labor and um, and they need all of the support that we can get to them. So uh, definitely tune in later for, for Lauren's talk because that's such an important topic. And you led right into it. You gave her a great promo right there, Donnie. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes. <laughs> and let me see. I think I saw one more little uh, question pop up in the chat. Um, oh, <laughs> oh, somebody wants, to, uh, wants you to talk a little bit about your hibiscus creations. Oh shit! Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Uh, that's a really funny story. Um, so again, going back to being raised in Mexico, uh, there's just so many. There's so many recipes, like so many secrets, you know, that need to be shared with like plant-based food and. Well, one of them is like a uh, hibiscus flowers. And so I remember like in the coast uh, of Michoacan, Micho Michoacan is like the state from where I'm from. And it's a huge state where it has like a beach, uh, where we're from, it's kind of like in the mountains, there's like lakes and it's in a high elevation. So it's kind of like a chilly spot, but there's also like desert and it also has like tropical jungles. And uh, the coast, yeah, so the coast um, has uh, these like hibiscus tacos. For me, they, they were always kind of like on the tart side because they cook them with tomatillo and a salsa verde. And the hibiscus flowers already have like the natural tartness to them. So when, I don't know, one day I was doing some kitchen experiments I thought about like, oh, I'm gonna caramelize some onions and then caramelize the flowers together, drop some like orange juice and a little bit of agave. And so it all comes together. And this was one of the recipes that I started for the vegetarian blog, like, I don't know, back in, <clears throat> I don't know, 2013, 14. And I started selling these at the these tequila and taco festivals and it was just kind of like one of our one of my signature taco dishes and I came across with a girl in Portland um, a vegan a vegan chick and she was she was like hey these tacos are hella good and um <clears throat> she was she was uh she was super like you know very supportive of of how it was like pretty much in like <laughs> I was you know I I did not go to a like a culinary school I did not really have a background in like rest the restaurant industry so I basically had like googled every 
part of like the food booth that I had. So my shit wasn't like all together, you know? And she was like, hey, you know, I really support women and like in the industry, they're kind of like getting their stuff together. And um, anyways, the, uh, so she was always like, you know, they're very like, you know, like, hey, you should go for this, go all out for this. And and and, and a good friend from LA. And uh, I think it was 2017 when Mexico had a, Mexico City had like a, a pretty bad earthquake. They did a uh, a fund a fund relief, and um, I think it was two thousand. I think it was two thousand seventeen, maybe sixteen or seventeen. And she was like, "Hey, you know, like we're doing this like uh, LA's best uh, vegan taco. Would you like to come? It's like a competition, and uh, there's like eight eight competitors and." Um, we just need like someone else to fill in and I would love it if you could come down and you're like, you know, you're a female chef in the industry and I would just really like to support like the, the female part of it. And I was like, but I'm, kind of, I'm from San Francisco. I'm not from LA. She's like, oh, it doesn't matter. You know, this is all going towards like, you know, like the earthquake and, you know, like the people that are in need. So I was like, okay, sure. You know, like I'll go down. So uh, I I went with I went down there. Just, I I recently had talked to my friend that helped me out down there. And she was like, "Hey, do you remember like the security people? They took like your cashew cream, and you were like so upset about it." And and so I guess I I I went back down there with a uh, no or almost nothing of cashew cream. And the event was at uh, I think it was like I was like cafe gratitude. Uh huh. And the people that were like, oh, you know, like, what do you need? And it's like, I, I don't have any cashews. And I had like a flight that like came right at the, the tight moment. And they were so nice to accommodate the ingredients that I needed to kind of just put, put the stuff together that they had taken away. <laughs> and, um, and by the way, this hibiscus recipe is on the website. It might need to be re-edited because I posted it like, a bunch of years ago <laughs> but uh the recipe for the hibiscus tacos is there and the difference is that I like to bring out the sweetness from it because for me I'm not a very big fan of like sour things and so one of the things that I did with this uh recipe was kind of bring like the sweetness side to it so there's uh we have like a little bit of the sweetness from the caramelized onions and of course like the darkness and then uh, we always like usually pair it up with some cashew cream and guacamole and that and uh, maybe some cabbage and that just kind of ties that ties in the taco and uh, and anyways it was just it was such a crazy day and I was like there frying the freaking hibiscus away and um, and and it was it was a really blessed it was a blessed afternoon because the judges uh, I remember getting it like an award for like the best the best vegan taco from the judges. Nice. That was that was really cool. You know, that was very sweet. I was, I was like, it's I'm from San Francisco. They're like, that doesn't matter. <laughs> so that was that was really sweet. That was really sweet. Oh, I love it. That is such a good story. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, That's you. so awesome. Thank you so much for spending time with us today and sharing your recipes and sharing your stories. We really, really appreciate it. You know, sending all the most beautiful vibes and positive energy to everyone. You know, like this is such a hard, crazy year. You know, I, I, I know so many people are going through so many changes and, you know, I just want people to know like you are not alone. We are all in this together and you know, if we can just keep, you know, just keep each other, you know, together with with positive energy, I think we will be able to, you know, make it smoothly towards the next year. So sending all the positive cosmic vibrations to everybody and namaste and mucho amor, mi gente, and amigos. <laughs>